Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. In the last video, we finished our basic admin panel to send notifications. But still, we need to learn a lot. Like sending notification from an Android device to another Android device. But before moving there, I would like to make you remember that till now we use the legacy API. But that API is old and we have a new version which is HTTP v1. So first we will learn using HTTP v1. And the first thing that we need is the access token for HTTP v1 API. So what I am going to do is I will create our own REST APIs to send notification. And for building the APIs I will use Node.js. So, I will create a new project for this and here I have my empty project and it is nothing but a folder that is created on my desktop and inside this folder I will create all the files that are required for this project and today the first thing that we need is a javascript file which is app.js or you can name your file anything. Now make sure node.js is installed in your system which is already installed if you are watching the series from the beginning because for building the admin panel I use node as well but that was not purely node we just use the HTTP server of node module which was a third party server and in this project I am going to use node only so uh, the first thing that I will do is I will get the or generate the access token because last time the access token we were using that token will not work with this HTTP v1 API. So it is a bit different so we need to generate and retrieve the access token. So the first thing that we need is we need a private key. So. Uh, to get the private key we need to go to the firebase console and from the console select the project in which you are working in my case it is android notification tutorial and you need to go to project settings and then service accounts now from here you can generate a new private key and i am going to use node click generate private key select generate key and you will get a file so this is the file save this file and you have some content on this file so I will use this file in our project so paste the file here Or let's just move the file to my project folder and I will rename it to let's say service account to make it simple and short now let's write some code so the first thing that we need is we need Google API's and we also need to install the Google API's and to install Google API's we need to go to the terminal so click on view and select integrated terminal if you are using visual studio code then I will run a very simple command here which is npm i which means npm install and then google apis it will install google apis in our project and it will create a new folder here you see we have node modules and we have the google apis here and it will also generate package-log.json but that's okay you don't need to worry about that now the first thing that we need is the google apis itself so i will write var and we can use a destructuring format which is google in curly braces equals to require google apis now if you are confused about this line then you should learn node and it basically means uh, it basically means where google equals to require google apis dot google 
so you can use both the lines either this or this so I'm using the first one so we have the Google API's now I will create a messaging scope so we have messaging scope equals to and here we need to put the URL which is this https google apis.com slash auth slash firebase dot messaging so we need to use this url scope so i will copy it and i will paste it here so we have our messaging scope now we will define another variable for scopes and we have only a single scope which is messaging scope then we also need to use the HTTP of node because we need to run a server as the node modules the node things will not run on browser we need a server so we will use this HTTP to start our server or local server environment now we will create a function and this function will give us the access token so we have the name get access token and you can name your functions anything you want but it makes sense now this function will return a promise and inside the promise we will pass a function that will take two objects resolve and reject then here we will first get our key which is this service hyphen account dot json so we have key equals to require service hyphen account dot json because this file is in the same directory so dot means from the current directory this file so we have the key now we will create a jwt client and we will get it from new google auth jwt then it takes the first thing is the client email so we have email inside this key so we will write key dot client underscore email then the next parameter is null then we have private key which is again inside the key file so we have private underscore key then we need scopes and then the last parameter is null so we have our jwt client now finally we will call authorize function from this jw client so we will write jw client dot authorize now this authorize function will take a function again and this function will take error or tokens now if there is any error we will reject the error and we will stop the further execution if there is no error we will resolve the token by using tokens dot access token now we can get the promise from this get access token and from that promise we will get the access token so let's see how we do this so we will simply write get access token dot then and then it will take a function and this function will give us the access token so here you can print access token so we have our access token now you can run this file to get the access token and to run it go to terminal and here we will write node app.js and you see we have our access token now you can also 
create a server to display the access token on the browser by using this HTTP variable. So you can write here where server equals to HTTP dot create server and it takes a function and the function takes two parameter request and response. Now inside the server we can call this thing the get access token thing and here we can display the access token in the response so we can use response dot end and then access token to display the token now you need to start the server and to start the server you can write server dot listen it takes two parameter the first parameter is the port number let's say 3000 so it will listen to the port 3000 and then the second parameter is a function here we can print something like server started fine now go to terminal again and write node and app.js you can see the server is started now if you will go to localhost 3000 then you can see we have our access token. Now we will use this access token to send notification with the help of API HTTP v1. But that's it for this video friends and we will do the further things in the next video. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did then please help me by sharing this tutorial with your friends and for any kind of query you can leave your comments. Thank you guys. This is Bilal Khan signing off.